What up, YouTube? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of What? What? Could, what? What you talking about? I'm your host, Super Kurt. This is my main man and co-host, J Matt. What's good, everybody? And we got a great analyst from Washington calling, Ricky G. Hey, what's up, Austin, Texas? What's good, Ricky? I'm chilling. Today we got a lot of topics, so we're gonna jump right in. The first topic we're gonna talk about. It should star NBA players participate in the Olympics? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think there's a debate with that. Before 1992, only college players were allowed to play, and they were playing against professionals over in, in Europe, Asia. All, all the international players were all considered professionals getting paid, but still considered amateurs for some odd reason. It's a complete contradiction. Absolutely, NBA players deserve to be in there. If anything, it helped by having the NBA players in there just for the fact that it, international basketball is a completely different game now. Everybody's way better. Uh, there's actually competition when we go to the Olympics now. Uh, it's no longer blowouts like it was in 1992 Barcelona. Uh, so if anything, NBA players have impacted in a great way, and I think they definitely deserve to be in there. Okay. Um, I kind of disagree with you on that. Uh, I think I love to see you know the NBA players you know uh, defend our country, so to speak, and right. uh, you know bringing the titles home. But I don't like to see them get hurt. Uh, you know they don't get paid to play. They have a lot invested in these NBA seasons, uh, like Bosch isn't playing right now. Right. His Olympics coming up. Dwayne Wade also. Yeah, Dwayne Wade. Their, their girls know. obviously pulled out. Uh, they were saying, uh, you know, they would like to get paid for it. Uh, I don't know if the old Dream Team got paid for it. They said they might have got a little bit of uh, money. So it's the endorsements, like, uh, man. Imagine yeah, all the endorsements, endorsements and right? stuff. Yeah. Um, I really don't, you know, I really don't think they need to play anymore. I think uh, it's solidified we're the best country in basketball and pretty much all every sport. But um, you know, what's your take on that, Ricky? Um, I mean, personally, I think, I think yes, they, they should and can be able to play, uh, but ultimately it's their decision, and that's why I say yes. So, uh, you know, I think that they feel, you know, a sense of honor, something kind of like serving in the military, you know, you're doing it for your country, you know, you're serving your country, that's why they don't really get paid for it, that's the way I see it at least. Right. You know, right. but I mean, in a sense, the cut, the kickback that they receive off all those endorsements, you know, I mean, it, it really makes up for the lack of pay, but for sure. yeah, I mean, it's, it's their decision, you know, so... I say yes, you know, they should be able to play if they want to or not. Being that it's their decision, you know, injuries are risk in any kind of game, uh, in particular sports, so uh, they feel like they want to do it. It's kind of like, like Rick said, sign up for the military. They feel like it's, it's an honor to do it. Right. If I got invited to the Olympic team, if I was on the NBA, oh, man, there would be no question. I, I would I'll be ecstatic. <laughs> and then again, saying so. that I didn't want them to play, uh, I would play yeah. if I had a chance to play on the Olympics. <laughs> <so. laughs> You know, that saying that, you know. Right. But uh, we'll jump right into topic two. The NBA draft was last night. Um, it was I thought it was a really good draft. Uh, so we can do an NBA draft recap. And we'll also jump into which NBA draft rookie do you think is going to have the biggest impact in 2013? Uh, uh, top five, you know, Anthony Davis, number one, is a consensus. Everybody pretty much knew going in uh, that uh, the Hornets were going to take him at number one. Right. Uh, Kid Go, Chris, followed by teammates with him. Uh, and then Bradley Bill from Florida, Deion Waiters from Syracuse, and Thomas Robinson from Kansas, a great pick. Um, now, as far as my impact player, it's not even none of those top five. Obviously, uh, Anthony Davis is going to be a huge difference maker alongside with Austin Rivers. They're going to be a contender in the next couple years uh, for sure. But uh, my actually impact player is going to be Andre Drummond. Uh, I think Andre Drummond going to the Pistons was a steal. Uh, I thought he should have been a little bit higher pick. I had him going to Sacramento, actually. I had him going playing next to DeMarcus Cousins, but instead he's going to be playing next to Greg Monroe. A 6'10 and 6'11 power forward center duo. That's the closest thing you can get to a 7-foot combo that the L.A. has. Right. Nobody has that kind of power in the middle. I think defensive-wise they're going to be a, a brand new team, and Drummond's going to be a, a big factor in that. What's your take on that, Rick? Um, I mean, honestly, my, the person that I chose, I mean, out of the top five, they're all going to be great, just like Jason said. I mean, each individual is going to have their time to develop and I think that certain situations on each team are going to are going to kind of stunt some of the, the development of, the, of the, these other players that I'm not naming. But my biggest impact player would be Dion Waiters. Mm. That was a really good pick. That was a really good pickup for the Cavs. Uh, their backcourt is really going to be stacked with them. I mean, they had Alonzo Key, who had yeah, he was off and on. He was streaky. You know, they had Anthony Parker. He just retired. So I mean, now you add Dion Waiters, who's a, a prolific scorer in college at least. You know, that's a he wanted to. He's a great shooter. You know, he, I mean, he's really nice. And, I mean, you pair him up with Kyrie Irving, that backcourt might be unstoppable. Then you go off and pick up somebody like a Tyler Zeller later on in the draft, actually later on in the first round. Yeah. And, I mean, you put, you put those pieces together with Tristan Thompson, uh, Anderson Bearsall, Jameson, Gibson. I mean, you, you, got, you got something nice over there in Cleveland. They, they might be picking up after that LeBron stuff brought them down, you know? Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for Deion Waiters. Right, right. But I am saying they're going to have something similar, you know, 
that back and forth, carrying the team, you know, stuff like that. Well, that's a definitely good point. I like that. Uh, with that said, um, my my uh, opinion is pretty much like y'all's. I thought the draft was pretty much like I thought it would go. Uh, without without Gilchrist going second, I thought Bill would go second. Okay. Um, but my player that I think is going to have the most impact right off the jump, I think it's going to be Austin Rivers. All right. I think his game is actually suited for the NBA game. He came in as a freshman, uh, had 16 points per game, shot 43% from the field, had uh, 37% from three-pointers, and that's pretty good as that a freshman coming in. That's the only good. knock I would say is he shot 66% from the free throw line, which I don't understand uh-huh. how guys do that. This is the <laughs> easiest <laughs> shot it's in basketball. It's called a free people. throw. <laughs> a free throw. But, I mean, if he pulls that up, I think he'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, manage in this NBA game. He's able to drive. He has uh, crafty moves. Right. He's, you know, real sleek and smooth with the ball. So I think he'll be able to get to the lane. And when you can get to the lane, um, like my man Skip Bayless said, you can, you know, you can pretty much score. Yeah. Uh, if he can raise up his free throw percentage, I think he'll have a good chance uh, to do some damage in the league. He's definitely a bigger threat with a higher free throw percentage going to the lane the way he's able to do. So uh, I, I definitely can't argue with that. That's a good point. Okay. And with that said, we'll go into topic three. Uh, what do you think of the college football uh, conference realignment? Realignment, I think, benefited in a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, TCU has always been a contender, but never got the nod because they played in the Mountain West. You right. know, they, they didn't have any competition. Now coming to the Big 12, if they can run through the Big 12, which I don't think they can, not the way they did Mountain West, but if they can, not gonna they're, they're, they're going to have a better chance of getting the nod to go to the national championship. Because, I, you know, there's people that can argue that they deserve to go a couple times in the last, you know, five, six years. Right. Uh, so it definitely benefits it. Uh, I think it's going to make it a, a – Better conference as far as the Big 12 is concerned. West Virginia coming in as well. We're losing the Aggies, uh, which good riddance in one way, but at the same time, I'm going to miss a rivalry. I'm going to miss a rivalry. Uh, but it's definitely, I think, overall, it's going to benefit a lot of different ways. So TCU is going to be the standout with that, I think. Rick, what's your opinion on that? Uh, I think the realignment was great for college football. You know, I, I think it made it easier for the playoff system to be voted for, you know, and actually come into effect. I like what Jason was saying. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think there's a lot of good things that came from it. You know, each conference has gotten a little more competitive, you know, in their own respect. Um, you're going to see a lot of new uh, recruitments from different states coming to new, uh, to new states, new cities, new schools, you know. And I think that's going to be a pretty cool thing because, you know, some people from West Virginia that never seen Texas, they come down to Texas like, oh, I want to go to the band. We get a good quarterback, a good quarterback, you right. know. I didn't even think about the recruiting aspect. That's a, that's a really good point. A really good point. I think it's uh, going to be great for football. I am going to miss the rivalries. I'm going to miss the Texas A&M. Some of the, even the Missouri and Colorado. Right. You know, uh, but I mean, I'd yeah. rather get rid of a Missouri, Colorado, and get a TCU and, TCU and, and a, uh, West Virginia. West Virginia. Oh, yeah. You know, so uh, you know, I think it's going to benefit conferences like the Big Twelve, SEC. I think they're good. they just got stronger. Yeah. Um, what happened to Boise State? You know, where are they going to go? They're supposed to go to Big East. Big East right. is kind of like falling off the map. So yeah, they are. <laughs> Everybody's listening. <laughs> <laughs> I think with this playoff system coming, uh, Boise State's going to have to make a decision. They're going to have to pick a conference. I think they might as well jump into the Big 12 with TCU. They played with TCU before. Why not jump in our, our conference, play with the big dogs, uh, have a chance to go against the SEC every year? Because I think with this playoff system, it's actually going to be a Big 12 SEC battle for a long time. I agree. Um, that's, I agree. That's my opinion on that. So they're they're by far the two best conferences. Same game. So and some could argue Pac-12. I mean, some could argue that. Yeah, uh, there, there's some teams in the Pac-12. I mean, there's some, some could argue that. Yeah, and they're I'm definitely. actually uh, sleeping on the Pac-12. Uh, with that said, uh, who are your uh, who do you got winning the national championship in college football next year as a preseason pick? Preseason Early. pick. It's a little it's a little rough for me to say. With uh, definite, you know, uh, for sure on this answer, but uh, it's gonna be, you know, SEC and Big Twelve, uh, like we were just saying. Uh, winner of LSU and Alabama uh, would, you know, out of the SEC, and the winner of the Big Twelve is gonna be biasedly. I got Texas coming, but that's a biased opinion. Oh, yeah. uh, unbiasedly, I think it's gonna be between TCU and Oklahoma. Uh, actually, I think they're gonna come in. I think TCU is gonna make some noise in the Big Twelve right off the bat. Um, but uh, it's gonna be between those five teams: LSU, Bama out of the SEC, and the three teams out of Big Twelve: uh, Texas, TCU, and Oklahoma. Cool, so. I like that. Like, what do you, what's your opinion, Rick? Uh, just for, like, for, I don't really know, man. Uh, there's a lot of good teams that, that come, a lot of good recruiting classes. I mean, biasedly, of course, Texas, but the more I look at it, I mean, if we get a quarterback, if we find ourselves a quarterback or something, 
somebody just randomly blossoms like it always happens in college football. I mean, Texas could be a legit contender. You know, they yeah. went out, got to, got to sell some receivers, stuff like that. I think TCU will make noise, just like Jason said. I, I like that team. I, I like them for a lot. You know, West Virginia is in a pushover. You know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good teams that I know. Oklahoma, that's always a great rivalry between us. I'm glad that stayed together for sure. Yeah, no um, And you see, yeah. I mean, you look at the dominant teams that are always there, you know. I, I mean, you take your pick. <laughs> really, you know. Right. I mean, I mean, you can't go against a national champion uh, from the previous year. So, I mean, that's obviously going to be a, a number one pick right there for a lot of folks. But look, who, look at who they lost, you know, and, and take that stuff into consideration. So, I mean, it's really up in the air, but... Like I said, if we find a quarterback, I, I truly believe that Texas can win something if they find themselves a quarterback. Yeah, they quarterback needs to step up. Place. Their defense is ready. They really do need to step up. Defense uh, is ready, though. You're right yeah. on point with that. Defense, defense is ready. Stop. we got a lot of running backs. we got, like, a stable of running yeah, backs we now. Like, we got the number one in the country, Jonathan, Jonathan Gray, Gray, just came in. Yeah. Jonathan Malcolm Gray. Brown, yeah. who was, like, third in the country last year, and Joe Bertrand. So, we're, our running backs are set. Uh, we got a lot of receivers coming in also. Um, but with my college football uh National Championship preview pick. I got a uh, USC versus Oklahoma. At USC, are they still? I think they're still on the band, though. Are they? Are they still I, think, the I, think they still I thought they were uh, uh, released this year. I thought it was there. Is it this it year? Was, I, I want to say it might be next year, but I'm not. You, if you're, okay. you know, my apologies if you're right yeah. on that. But well, I, I might be wrong. Yeah, that's what I thought too. If if I'm wrong on that, then I'll go with maybe uh, Alabama. Okay. You know, maybe Alabama versus Oklahoma. You can probably fit yeah. TCU in there. But uh, I think a lot of people are sleeping on West Virginia. West Virginia is actually going to be a really good team this yeah. year. Um, if they can get it together, pull off some wins in the Big 12, early wins, then I think they can uh, make some noise. Yeah, for well. sure, for sure. Uh, I definitely can't argue with that. West Virginia came out of the Big East last year. They did really well over there. They were in the Big East big at the East same time. Well, uh, big 12, just like you said earlier, it's a big <laughs> boys now. It's a big boys time. All right, cool. All right, we're going to get into some NFL football, some NFL football news, and we're going to start off with some NFL Super Bowl uh, preseason picks. Uh, I think hands down favorite out of the AFC is going to be the Patriots. Uh, okay. They, they, they uh, made some moves. Uh, they still got Tom Brady. They still got Wes Welker. They still got Rob Gronkowski. Uh, they still got all their core, uh, you know, and they were a, a tremendous team last year. I think they're going to be better this year with the uh, moves that they made. And uh, actually, I got Green Bay making their move coming back into the uh, Super Bowl again. Okay. Uh, I think they kind of folded a little bit last year. I think their defense is going to step up a little bit more. They made some good draft picks. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers is the name number one player in the NFL right now. Uh, and I, I don't argue with that at all. I think he's I a tremendous quarterback. Uh, the, the way he can move in the, in the pocket, he, he's, a, he's a multiple weapon quarterback. He's not just a pocket thrower, but he's also a great pocket thrower at the same time. But get him out of the pocket, he's just as deadly and he's pretty fast considering he's a, a right. white quarterback well, see, and you don't see that too often. <laughs> yeah. uh, but those would be my picks for, uh, you know, the NFL. Right, okay. Uh, what's your opinion on that, Rick? Uh, biasly, I can't go against my New York Giants. That's my preseason Super Bowl pick. They are the reigning champions, you know, yet again. I just want sure. to put that out. But, um, I mean, I think the NFC is actually going to be a pretty tough uh, conference, man. Yeah. I mean, you, you really got to – you really got to step your game up. A lot of people went out and made some moves, like the Eagles, for instance. You know, they picked some problem spots that they had. Uh, who else? The 49ers. You know, they're putting all their faith in Alex Smith. You know, let's see what happens. They went out and got Randy Moss. They, yeah. you know, they did some things for him, and they still got that defense. And that defense was number one in the league. True. You know, one of the best in the league. So, you, I mean, you really got to take them into consideration. The Packers are always going to be there. Uh, Aaron Rodgers ain't nobody to play with, but I mean, he ain't lost nobody, and he got to, you know, he's got good stuff going on. So I don't know, man. NFC's kind of a toss up. I'm gonna say Giants because, like I said, they're the reigning champs. Right. Uh, AFC Patriots hands down, not even a question. Uh, they got everybody coming back, and then some. So I mean, they got rid of Ocho Cinco. He didn't do much, so that's not gonna affect them. And then they filled that slot right back up. So yeah. I mean, we got Brandon Marshall, right? Yep. Okay. Uh. Man, I hate to say the Patriots because everybody said the Patriots. Who did the Patriots play last year? Uh, was it the Ravens? Yeah, the uh, Ravens were the, probably the toughest yeah, competitor. I'm gonna go yeah. with uh, I'm gonna go with the Ravens then. I'm gonna go with the Ravens okay. versus the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys are actually gonna come out and have that year that the Giants have. I think Romo's gonna finally, finally creep over this little uh, mountain that's been like in front of him uh, as far as getting to the Super Bowl, getting to a championship game. Uh, not fumbling, holding on to the ball, you know, right. stretching out. You know, I hope he can do something to have all these Cowboy fans bring back America's team, uh, 
bring another championship to uh, Dallas and to the Texas. You know what I mean? That's what I want. That's what I'm going with as my preseason pick. I'm a little biased right. with uh, uh, being a Cowboys fan. But that's how that's how I see it. Going. Uh, I, I don't think they have a chance. Yeah, I, think <laughs> I really don't. NFC East. I mean, they're, they're, it's going to be competitive as it is. Uh, but you got to run through teams like Green Bay, right. like Detroit. The Detroit Lions are going to be a hell of a team this year. Team. Uh, the, the NFC North in general: it's Chicago, right. Green Bay, and Detroit. Yeah, Minnesota is still not going to be anywhere, you know, as far as uh, making any noise. But it's still going to be a really tough uh, division in general, along with the right. NFC East. That's a lot of teams that the Cowboys have to run through on paper. I think the they should be able to do it, but every year on paper they should be able to do it, and they never do. Right. I think the Jets are going to be an interesting team as far and uh, as well as the Broncos. I think they're also going to be an interesting team. I think uh, the Jets are going to have more success than the Broncos. I don't think the Broncos are going to have that success. I think they're going to be missing Tim Tebow, man. That's uh, what I think. Man. What's, What's your opinion, opinion Randy? Randy? No, man. What's your opinion, you can't miss Tim Tebow. How many games do you think it's going to take for Tebow to start? I'd say three. Three games, this is what's going to happen. They're going to, Mark Sanchez, this is my opinion. Mark Sanchez is going to come out, man, I got Tim Tebow behind me, man. I got I to gotta come out hard. Well, nervous. He's going to be they're, they're, nervous, and he's going to start throwing picks, and he's going to start fumbling, and then, you know, Tebow's going to yeah. creep his way in there. I heard he's about 220 now, big, 225, all muscle. Yeah, yeah, yeah stop, you know, stop. so he's going to come in there. You know, he's going to be running some, uh, the uh, option football, you know, he's going to pick up yards. He's going to get these touchdowns. He's going to take Sanchez's spot. I feel bad for Sanchez because I think he did a lot for the Jets. But uh, that's just my opinion. Like like Stephen A. Smith says on first and ten or first take, uh, the fix is in. Uh, the, the Jets knew going out right at the bat when they picked up Tim Tebow that they wanted him to be the starter. He fits the mold in, in the New York Jets. Ground and pound. When Tim Tebow came in to the Broncos last year, they became the number one rushing <laughs> offense in the league. That's, That's obviously what Rex Ryan wants. He's not a he's not a pass first kind of coach. He doesn't want his team to be that. And on top of it, they they have the defense as it is. The defense has always been there. They still got a lot of uh, good players. Bart Scott leading the way with that. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully Revis shows up this year. I, I just saw in my last episode. Are you kidding me? He needs to show up to earn that money. Stop holding out. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think the fix is in. Tebow's going to come in. Probably about three to four, maybe five games tops, depending on how Sanchez starts off. We'll see, but uh, I think the fix has been in since day one with it. Okay. Do y'all think? Uh, do y'all think Peyton Manning is gonna have a better season than uh, Tebow did last year in Denver? Do you want to go ahead and start that off, Ray? Uh, most definitely. Um, I just compared the receiver, the core of receivers um, from Indianapolis to Denver. To me, they're kind of similar. You know, there weren't any standout names until Peyton Manning started passing them the ball. True. So I think he's going to make them better. I think the next going to be stiff a little bit, maybe first couple games, and people are going to start talking like, oh, maybe he's not the same. And then after that, I think he's going to shake it off. He's going to knock the cobwebs out, and he's going to come out and look like the regular paid man that we're used to seeing, and he's going to dominate, and he's really going to do something for that team. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Tim Tebow accomplished a, a pretty big feat last year. He really did, winning seven out of four. But losing the last, what, three out of four, I think, is what he went into play. Yeah. He backed into the playoffs. You know, if it wasn't for the Raiders folding, they wouldn't even make the playoffs. But I do think Peyton Manning's going to have a better season. He's just a better quarterback. That is the bottom line. But uh, there's still obviously the question mark, can he take the hit when he gets hit? Is he going to be able to maintain a 16-game season and going into the playoffs potentially? But overall, there's hands down. I don't think there's any chance or any question that he's a – not a better quarterback than Tim Tebow, and I think he's going to make the receivers on Denver look like all-stars and pro bowlers. Uh, he's going to turn that team around, I think, a little bit. When you got to pay Manning in the, in the backfield throwing the ball, think about the running game, think about the running game, going to open that up even more, running up even more. I just think, I hate to say it, I just think Peyton Manning's done. I think, Ooh, I think Indy that. saw it. I, you know what I mean? They're around him all the time. I think they saw it. I think they knew his neck was going to be too severe to come back. I think they're uh, they're like, hey, you know, we want to move on, man. Right. Let's, you know, let's go ahead and go after this number one pick out here. You know, and they made a good and pick. They, they, they did. You know, that's a good pick to back. You know, to they did, but uh, succeed him. But I see, I see Peyton Manning coming out, trying real hard, not succeeding with the with the uh, receivers that Denver has. I think Tim Tim Tebow made them as good as they were just off of his running ability. I think the corners were. Should I step up? Should I, you know? Oh yeah, it's definitely a threat. So I think yeah, that, one way or you know, I think that played a part into them winning, and that's a, uh, you know, that's what I think about that. All right, uh, uh, definitely good point, but uh, yeah, Peyton uh, Manning's a different sorry. breed of a quarterback. Go ahead, Rick. No, I was just gonna say, um, yeah, he made him better, you know, with his running ability and stuff like that. But how many times did he miss 
the pass, dude. How many times did he miss like the target Ooh, completely, bro? Ooh, you know, so I mean, in a sense, you couldn't make that better. Peyton Manning, on the other hand, will get them the ball in the same spot every single time, and that will in turn make them better receivers because they'll know as soon as I turn one, two, boom, it's in my hand. Yep. As soon as I turn one, see, two, boom, see, it's see, in my hand. It's not gonna be a short hop to you. It's not gonna be way over your head. It's gonna be in the numbers every time because that's what Peyton does. So sure. that, that to me, that's the big difference between Tebow and him. So yeah, Tebow made him better, but better based off of just being a leader. Peyton's gonna be a better leader and a better quarterback to him. So that's in turn gonna make them look like shy, man. And people are gonna be talking about him. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Tim Tebow, he had the dual threat, able to draw the defense. They, the defense didn't know which way to go, uh, whether play the pass or, or play the run. Uh, so it, that's definitely one aspect that he has over Peyton Manning. But Peyton Manning still has to play action, one of the best play action. Uh, passers in the game ever, like it was a straight up. Uh, so that defense is going to collapse on the running game because the running game was so good last year. Right. They're still going to have the same running back, same offensive line, right. different scheme with Peyton Manning as a quarterback. Uh, but the defense is still going to be confused on which way to go, and Peyton Manning's going to throw the ball in the numbers. Hopefully that offensive line steps up. That's that's going to be the big key. If that offensive line doesn't play that, good, yeah, they can protect you know, Peyton Manning. Uh, is what they're going to boil down to. It's going to boil down to that. Sure, yeah, for much. sure. Well, uh, YouTube, this segment is called Are You Kidding Me? I'm going to let Rick go ahead and lead us off. All right. You know, I was watching the news the other day, and I saw this show. Or it's not, it wasn't a show. It was a segment about fake soldiers. Fake soldiers meaning dudes that dress up in full uniform, whether it be Marine Corps with the blood stripe or, you know, dress blues for the, for the Army or whatever you want to call it. You know, but they're fake. They have fake medals on their chest. I just want to tell them, what are you thinking? Are you kidding me? Right. You have a real veteran over here that sacrificed his life or his limb or his, you know, psyche to defend our country the right way and do it exactly for all the right reasons. And you're trying to steal the limelight? Are you kidding me? Word up, word up. I agree with you on that, man. Jay, you want to touch on yours? Yeah, uh, all the professional boxers, man, testing positive for steroids. When they know that the Olympic drug testing is going to be a protocol pretty much in boxing from here on out, if you want a major fight, why are you, what are you thinking? Antonio Tarr is the most recent person. Came out, he, he fought a, a good fight on his little comeback trail, trying to make his way back up in the, in the cruiserweight division, trying to get his title shot, and test positive for steroids. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And right? Andre Berto, he's supposed to be fighting Victor Ortiz. Tested positive for steroids on his idea to do the drug testing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's That's ridiculous. Right. Y'all professional athletes, y'all know better. Mine, man. Me and Jason live in Texas. Rick has been in uh, Washington right now. It's been hot as hell in Texas. It's been, it was 109 yesterday. Man, 106 man. without the heat index. So, you know, uh, you got to find something to do in the summertime, man. You got to go out there and go swimming. You got to get out there and run. At night or in the morning, you gotta you gotta find something to do to take up your time. I'm gonna tell you what this guy, Michael Daniel, did. And this guy lives in Texas, man. Okay. He lives in Waco, not too far, about an yeah, hour and a half, hour and a half two hours maybe. maybe. Yeah. Hour and a half. What he did was he was like, man, I'm bored. It's hot. I'm sweaty. I'm in my house. I must ain't got no AC or something. Right. You know, it's hot. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is, man, I'm gonna go to the store. I'm going to give me some of this synthetic marijuana. Not no real marijuana, because I heard that does shit to you. I'm going to give me some synthetic marijuana. So he gets his synthetic marijuana. He smokes it. And then a couple minutes later, it just it hits him, and he goes crazy. He turns into a zombie. And what he does, he attacks his dog. Oh. And the craziest part about this is, I mean, yeah, he, he got a felony charge for uh, cruelty to animals. But the craziest part is, he started chewing the dog's hair off. He chewed the dog's limbs off. He, he, he beat the dog, broke the dog's neck. And when the cops got there, he was laying with, uh, in a pile of blood with fur all over him. And he said, <laughs> he said that the synthetic marijuana made him do it. Now, if synthetic marijuana is that bad, we need to legalize the real <laughs> marijuana. No kidding. Are you kidding me, guys? Are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding Government, are you kidding me? Do you hear what the synthetic me? apparently did to this man? Come on. <laughs> Come on, guys. Well, thank you for watching this show. Thank you guys for subscribing. 
uh, we, we really appreciate uh, all you guys tuning in. Have anything to put in? Yeah, uh, once again, what Curtis said, I appreciate all the, the subscribers, all the viewers. Uh, any kind of questions y'all want us to answer, by all means, throw it out there. We'd love to answer them. Uh, but once again, we appreciate it, man. You got anything you want to put in, Rick? Uh, I just want to say I appreciate the subscribers, and we're only going to get better. And also, back on that NBA thing, I want to say look out for the Rockets. They made some really good moves, picked up three first round picks. Uh, yeah, just saying, I mean, check them out. The Rockets next year. All right. Cool. Happy for 4th of July, guys. Thank you for watching another episode of What? What, can, what? what you talking about? Be good, y'all. Holla. Smash, open wide, gaping gas. Make this the last time you make the class.